Hi everybody and welcome back to my backyard. Today I'm wearing the Vida FPV shirt and that's not random because today I have the Vida FPV 95X V3 and this is not mine, this is my friend's Luca one and it's the analog one. I already tried the HD version with the ne regular Nebula, not the Pro and I wasn't really excited about it, I have to say. Let's see if this analog version makes up for it and before we start, like, subscribe and also let me know if you think the Beta 95 V3 is gonna be better than the Cinelog 25 from Gepard C because I tried this a couple days ago and it was perfect. So, without further ado, let's see what I have in the box. Let's open it. I already love the box. Red and black is my favorite color scheme. So, we got accessories right here and yeah, this drone looks incredible. I love... Sorry. And when the drone came it was already open but I guess these are the accessories you get with it. They give us a replacement foam tape but I wish they went with the red one because if this one get damaged you gotta go with the boring one. Still, it's fine. The hexagonal nut wrench as always. Extra screws. Then they give us extra props. These are the gem fan five bladed ones for 2.5 inches, very nice. This is an adapter for a 19 by 19 camera and this is a 14 by 14 so uh, if you have a Nebula Pro for example you can use this one. Then there is this connector right here which is from the Instasmo 4K to the Naked GoPro and I don't super like this design because they give you stock the Instasmo 4K and you need to add the adapter to use with the GoPro and look, it doesn't look amazing. But I kind of understand this choice because BDFPB is the one who makes the small 4K. So it makes sense for them to push you to get that kind of camera. But in my opinion this is a small 4K and this is the GoPro. It's so much better. You should go with the GoPro Plus reset. It's just better. It's lightweight. It's better video, better stabilization. There is just no doubt about it. The small 4K is good though. If you have that, if some a friend gives you that, if you find it for 100 bucks, it's not a bad camera. But at this point in time we have the Insta360 Go 2 and you don't need the UNA cable for that. It just doesn't make that much sense to me. So be the FPV, next time I wanna see the naked GoPro connector. You also chose this connector, so you should keep putting it on your drones. That's my opinion. And also they give you the angle connector right here to plug in to beta flight because the flight controller is hidden down there but this connector I used it and it has a huge issue look at this when you pull it out <laughs> the connector gets stuck inside and all the wires come out it's a mess they didn't solder it to the board so be really 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 careful with it I actually fixed it now I'm gonna put some glue on it I don't know if it's my unit or all of these are like this but just be careful. And now let's go to the drone itself. The first thing that strikes me is the design. I really really like it. I like the colors and I like how they designed it. I mean look at the plastic, super high quality and I mean these things just, I love them. The antennas goes down here and like this other one is locked inside it and I mean also look at this, the carbon is gloved inside the plastic so you don't see it and I must give credit to be the FPV for the design it's really nice also these things right here I first demonized them but actually trying them on the Gepard C Cinelog they work so good actually and I now like them <laughs> and for a cinematic type of flight these things save you a lot because the drone shakes and this removes a bit of jello from your camera I don't know how good these be the FPV ones go but red grommets, I like them. We have a Bide FPV branded, basically this is an EOS 2 from uh, Rankam. This is a 14x14 14 14 camera and I really like this camera for analog, I always use them. Then we have 1106 3800 kV motors and I will tell you later why this is a big issue with this drone. You already saw the 5 bladed gem fan props, 20 amp all in one single board finally flight controller. 250 milliwatts VTX and this little little antenna right here. And the drone like this weighs 100 grams without battery or GoPro or anything. And before we go fly I'm gonna tell you some stuff I don't really like about this drone. First of all look at the way the battery is mounted. Look at this. Two plastic hoops and if you crash hard you're gonna pull on them and break them. It's not the best. And also look at this. 650 milliamps battery 
doesn't fit. Stupid. You need to put it vertically. I don't want to be constrained by a design choice. I mean, usually they put it on on the carbon piece, it's flat and you can put whatever you like on it and it's not gonna snap or block your battery. This is stupid. And the design, as I told you, is nice, but it's form over function sometimes. But the biggest thing I don't like about this drone came out just now while I was looking at their website and there is a big, big red writing on it that says basically if you bought this version the old version the, the one they sold it for some months basically and the one with 1106 motors you should change your motors to 1404 motors you should buy them of course like they don't give them for free and now they're shipping this drone with 1404 motors because they just realized it doesn't have much jello and that's just a bad move from a company, you know, because you release a product, you don't even test it, it has jello, it has problems, and then you tell people to buy new motors and change them themselves. It's not a very good move, you know. Props is fine, just change the props. It's not a big deal, I'm gonna buy 10 bucks of props, but 100 bucks of motors, it's not very good. And this is the biggest downside about many products I see. They release them and then people realize there is jello, but why don't companies test them? That's just something I don't understand. And before we go fly, I need to mount my own mount basically. And you can download it in the description. This one is from Carbon PATG, you can do it in PLA and it's fine. And I know a lot of people struggle with these grommets right here, they are a pain to put on. And I want to show you the quickest way. Basically, take a string put it in, make a loop, you loop it around like this, and then, now it's a little hard to do it on camera, but you just pull it, boom, and you can see <laughs> it came in, and you just do this for the old tree and it takes a minute to do, very easy. And I just switch side because I have the antenna pointing that way, and excuse all the noise, but this module sucks a lot of power and it's draining my batteries. Let's fly, I put the GoPro on, and as you can see, it's a lot jiggly. And I don't know, maybe it's good, maybe it's bad. Let's see if it has jello. I'm gonna fly with a 650 milliamps battery. I guess it's the perfect size for this kind of drone. They are new, they just came out yesterday, so no complaints there. Perfect, we are recording, let's go! I'm gonna fly it in agro. And already starting out, it makes a ton of noise, it screams like crazy. The Gepard C is digital, it's heavier and it doesn't make all this noise. And there is a little bit of wind today. It doesn't fly super bad, I can see some jello in it. But it has power, but most of the power it has is due for it to be in analog, but... Oh, whoa, what is this? Oh, it's a wetsuit. Oh my god, it scared me. <laughs> what the hell? I almost ended up like Logan Paul. Okay, so it's not totally bad. I was expecting a lot worse. For sure he screams, for sure. It's not flying bad though. I tried the digital version and it was super bad. I don't know why. Yeah, but this one, it has control, you can fly. Yeah, but I can see jello. And I mean, flying analog. After you fly digital, you see analog, it's not the best really, but it's fine. And you wonder why I'm flying with the HD goggles, because they have a very good DVR, so why not, I mean. I have an analog module if you're wondering, so basically I'm picking up the analog signal. But yeah, it's not bad. I expected a lot worse from all the reviews and all the stuff. 
It's flying fine. But when you push gel, oh my god, what the hell happened? And this is what we are left with after the crash. The, the drone is fine, it's perfect, there is nothing broken, but the GoPro is missing. <laughs> and it, this rubber thing is detached from the actual bit of FPV. So good luck now putting it back together. And I just stabilized the GoPro footage in Resteady and I have to say, it looks very very nice. There is no jello at all. But if you look at the raw GoPro footage, you notice a problem. If you fly slow, it's fine. If you start doing something harder, this, these rubber dampeners are just the wrong choice, they're the wrong implementation. It's spring, there are birds and they make a lot of noise. As I was telling you, this is a bad implementation of rubber dampeners. They are too close together and also they are too soft and so the GoPro shakes. And this GoPro is 17 grams. The small 4K is 30 grams, so if you put that on here, it's gonna shake even further. And there is no jello because these are very good at removing it, but they cause another issue. And I mean, BDFP, why did you come up with this design? There are many ways to do this right, you did it wrong. And just look how they did it in the Cinelog 25. It doesn't shake at all, but it's soft enough so it dampens the jello, but the GoPro footage is steady. On this drone, it's not steady, it's wobbly. And even if Restead is good enough to stabilize it, it's not healthy to shoot a video like that. Because also, to stabilize it has to crop further, so you have less field of view, just because the GoPro is wobbling so much. So if you have one of these, it's fine, you don't have to panic, I mean, I'm just nitpicking. But you just need to understand what, what's better and what's not. This is a lazy design, they just did it and they were like, okay, it's fine enough, but fine enough is not good, it's just fine enough. So if you're looking for a 95mm Cinewhoop to buy, I don't recommend going with this one. It's nice, but it's not good enough in my opinion. This one is the best I've seen so far, it's good, and it has all in the right place. Get part C Cinelog 25, go check the review and get this one. If you have this drone, don't panic, it can be fixed. I mean, BDFPV tells you to change these ones, but in my opinion, the mount is the biggest issue. So one thing you can do is hard mounting your GoPro on it and using ND filters on it. Maybe it's gonna make it better because the camera doesn't shake too much or you can go slow and it's fine enough for going slow. If you wanna push it a little bit more, the GoPro is gonna wobble. And another thing you can do is you can buy from Banggood stiffer silicon dampeners and probably they are gonna behave much better than these ones and still remove the jello we don't want in the video. So BDFPV, this is a word for you. You can still make it, I mean, make better products. Pick someone who's got good pilot and good at building and send him some prototypes and just do back and forth a couple of times to make a more refined product. You cannot release and then update just like they do with software. If you someone buys your product and they need to change parts, they need to buy them and it's not right for the customer. And that's all for my review of the Beta 95X V3. As always, you can subscribe, like this video, tell me in the comments what you want to see next, if you have some doubts, if you want to know more about Jello, about Resteady, how to get good footage, let me know. I will make a video about it as soon as possible. And as always, Links in the description, you can support my channel with them. Stay safe and happy flying. Bye.